four he days. was foreordained. Before. What? Before. Before what? The foundation of the world. He was a predestinated thought. That's right. You can't credit Amen. the Son of God right. for nothing. That's right. nothing. That's right. Get me? That's Man. right. That's oh, right. that statement just stirred the devil up. That's, good. Right. That's right. That's right. I want to stir up your pastor. That's right. That's it. I say you up. cannot credit the Son of God for, for nothing. That's right. That's right. That's right. He couldn't even make himself. That's right. No, no. no. There are a lot of things that I disagree with Gino Jennings on. I disagree with his take on tongues. I disagree with his take on uh, salvation or loss of salvation. I disagree with his take on having to be water baptized and the person that's baptizing you needs to say in Jesus name or you're not saved. I disagree with him on a great many things. Now, there are some things that he says that I do agree with, especially when it's concerning things that are culturally related such as the LGBTQ community and things like that about men being, there's a lot of things I, I agree with him on. And the problem is, is that when he's right on some things and people are cheering that because it's obvious, they don't, they don't understand where he's wrong at, or they'll assume that he's right on everything else. One such issue is this issue of the Trinity because he doesn't understand what it means. He doesn't understand what people's arguments are. And even more so his own understanding of Jesus, Jesus's deity. Because of that, and because he's been cheered on and so forth, he has this this heightened arrogance, I think, uh, one of who, who he is, this inflated view of himself, one believing that God himself appeared to him and called him to be an apostle. And the problem with that is you can see that in the way that he views himself, kind of almost lifting himself up, even at the expense of Jesus. I've been preaching longer than Jesus. Oh, yeah. Great it works. Greater works. I've been preaching longer than Jesus. Greater works. I know they're going to upset somebody. Now, his point is that he's been preaching longer than Jesus because he's only thinking about Jesus' three and a half year ministry, even his 33 year, uh, 33 and a half years on this earth in the flesh in that earthly ministry. The problem is he seems to conflate that time with that being Jesus' existence. But we'll let him continue telling us why he thinks that he's done more than Jesus, why he's been preaching longer than Jesus. I don't care! I've been preaching longer than Jesus. Greater works. What can I have? Greater works. Jesus told his apostles greater works than these Give chapter verse. now in St. John chapter 14 and verse 12 verily verily I say unto a you a fool would say that's blaspheme you can call it what you want what you will Jesus plainly said verily verily I say unto truly, you truly truly I say to you he that believeth on me he that believe on me the works that I do the work that I do shall he do also shall, he said I'm going to do also and greater works and then he will say I do greater work which means more work that's right I did more work than what he done amen if that doesn't make you cringe, it, it makes me cringe. And I don't know why it wouldn't make you cringe for someone to say that, even though I know he's trying to be a little bit outlandish, a little bit bombastic. But no, you are wrong about that. We're going to look at the reason why he's wrong in just a second, though. Baptized thousands. He ain't baptized thousands. No, no. Jesus didn't go to all the world. He had a short ministry. But he sent me to all the world. Again, incorrect. First of all, Paul tells us that all of us have been all of us that are saved have been baptized into Jesus. John tells us that he baptized with water, but Jesus will baptize in the Holy Spirit. So no, even on that part, you are factually, biblically incorrect. Jesus has baptized far more than you could ever hope to. I ain't God, I got letters coming in now from Jamaica and through America about this Son of God subject. That's right. Is Jesus Christ the Son of God now? That's right. Yes and no. That's right. Now, his misunderstanding, even saying yes and no, he's the son of God and no, he's not the son of God. Well, this is part of the reason why he misunderstands his own ministry, why he inflates himself at the expense of Jesus, because he does not fully understand Jesus's deity as though that Jesus is uh, that Jesus's ministry began in his incarnation. It did not. That's right. Mm -hmm. right. I just want to toss that out at you, fellas, because I want you to get me. Come on. Now. <laughs> I say he is the son of God and he's not the son of God. That's right. Amen. The son of God did not originate in heaven. No, no. 
The flesh and blood of the Son of God did not come from heaven. Oh, no. The Son of God came out of a tribe of Judah. That's right. The Son of God came from the seed of David. That's right. That's right. Who was the son of Jesse. Yeah. Who yeah. came from the generations of Shem. That's right. The brother of Ham and Japheth. Right. Again, misunderstanding the scriptures. Uh, what do they say? A miss in the pulpit can cause a fog in the in the pews. And that's what's happening. The people are cheering this because they don't understand What's that meant? What? How does? How is it that he is from the tribe of Judah? How does that mean? How does that to show that he's come from this lineage of of David? What does that mean? Well, even the Bible's not trying to say that he is literally um, from this person. As a matter of fact, Jesus asked the question: How then does David call him Lord? Again, this is a misunderstanding on Geno's part, and people who don't read their Bible, they will sit and lean on him because he can regurgitate scriptures, either at a fast pace or multiple scriptures. They get impressed with that and don't go back and research themselves. Who are the sons of Noah? That's right. Now the grand boys of terror, the Lamech. That's right. Now here come the son of God with the predestinated thing. It's only one thing about the son of God that always was. Go ahead, brother. Get me, get me, get me. I said it was only one thing about the son of God that always was. First Peter chapter one. And that was the predestination of his arrival. The predestination of his arrival is the only thing that always was well wait a second though wait a second and we'll deal with this even more in depth but remember we believe according to the scriptures that jesus is god so no that wasn't what was always was was his 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 calling or the predestination of his arrival no remember the bible says in the beginning god and we see the plural form does that necessarily mean that 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 was the, the Trinity, the triune God, well, that means that it wasn't. But what it does show is in using the word Elohim, there might be a plurality in his existence. And we eat, and we know even more so when we look at verse 26 of chapter 1. Then God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Well, who's the us and who's the our? So clearly we see this triune, we see the Godhead, we see the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. We see Jesus there. We know this is going to be Jesus because we're going to find out a little bit later in John 1. And so no, his predestination, the predestination of his arrival, as he says, is not the only way that Jesus existed. Not the only thing that was. He's going to highly exalt and right. give it the same nature. nature. That's why Jesus said, Father, That's glory, right. Father. glory, Father. 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 Me. me, how you want it done? Mm -hmm. I want it done with thine own self. Thine own That's right. self. That's right. Don't use nothing else. That's right. And, no, and don't Father. use nobody else. Yeah. That's right. Glorify thy That's me. That's right. How do you want it? Small with thine own self. With thine own self. With the glory which I had that I had with thee. Had with thee. Before the world. Before the world. the world was. That's right. So the question is, what was the Son of God That's right. before the world was? That's right. Now, I want you to listen to what he says. What was the son of God before the world was? This is this is just really a bad understanding. And the problem is the people that listen, and there are a lot, are getting bad teaching and therefore understanding learning incorrectly. That's right. He was a nothing, nothing but a thought. That's right. He was a thought. Mind of God. Yeah. That's right. Mind of God. That's right. What was? The son of God Amen. That's right. before the world was. That's, That's right. right. Just a thought. Just a thought. A predestinated Same thought. thought. Nothing. Just a thought. A predestinated thought. How does that strike you? Does that sound like it's biblical? It should not sound biblical because it's not. We'll go to John 1 1 and we'll even going to hear him speak about John 1. But remember, the Bible says, In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God and the Word was God. The Word was God when? In the beginning. Who's the Word? God and God was in the beginning. The word was in the beginning. The word is God. As a matter of fact, and I know this is something that Gino doesn't, doesn't deal with when we talk about the Greek, but I think that every person, especially someone that on, that's on his level of influence, should understand the Greek. Here we have a predicate nominative that is God. What does a predicate nominative do? Predicate nominative describes what the subject is. In this case, the word. The word is God. It determines the classification of the category of the subject. So Jesus, who is the word, is God. And so it's not that he was some sort of thought in the in the mind of God. And there are other people that are that you've heard say that 
Jesus use was only a thought in God's mind. No, that is minimizing who Jesus is. And I mean, in a bad way, Jesus was more than a thought. Jesus was more than the word. Jesus was more than his earthly ministry. God made a prince. That's right, man. That's right. And that which was made was the express image of the personality of the father. That's right, man. But when you see me, you see the father. But Jesus, you got skin. Right. You got hair. That's right. You got a complexion. You come out of a tribe. That's right. Amen. You got descent. That's, That's right. right. God don't have no descent. No descent. So what do you mean when you see me, you see the Father? When you see my works? That's it. Because the works that I do, I can't do them of myself. That's right. But as my Father dwelleth in me, he doeth the work. So everything you see me do, I'm not doing it. That's right. Because I can do nothing of myself. That's right. Amen. That's right. His point that he's trying to make right now is that Jesus can't do anything of himself, which is true. But listen how he minimizes Jesus, as though Jesus is, again, as though Jesus is not God. Whatever he wants to do, he can do, but not according to Gino. You can't credit the flesh. Get me, viewer. Get me. You can't credit the, flesh. the Son of God for nothing. That's right. That's right. Get me? That's right. Man, that's oh, right. that statement just stirred the devil up real good. That's right. That's right. That's right. I want to stir up your pastor. That's right. That's it. I said, you man. cannot credit the Son of God Go for nothing. That's right. That's right. That's right. He couldn't even make himself. That's right. No, no. Now, he's saying this pretty emphatically, uh, but he couldn't even. Let's just see what Jesus says. Now, remember. This is Jesus. This is this is describing Jesus in Philippians 2. He says, who although this is Jesus Christ, who although he existed in the form of God. Now, notice what it says. He existed or this word, uh, this Greek word was hyperchone, which is he had been existing. So Jesus had been existing. So he so even just the first portion of verse six debunks everything that he just said. Jesus was existing in the form of God. You cannot exist in the form of God unless you are God. Look what he says. Did not regard equality with God a thing to be grasped, but what? He emptied himself. Who emptied himself? No one emptied him. It's indicating that Jesus himself was the one that was doing the emptying. He emptied himself, taking the form of a bond servant. Jesus did so and being made in the likeness of men. Now, this is in the middle voice, meaning that it, Jesus did this to himself. So who caused him to do this? He did. Understanding that he didn't just begin his existence once his birth, once his once his incarnation was. Remember, he had existed previously. We're going to go to that in just a little bit. But Gino Jennings could not be more wrong about his understanding of Jesus. And he is teaching people a erroneous teaching. Word. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And the earth. What did God use to make heaven and earth? His words. That's right. Listen. In the beginning was the word. In the beginning was God. And the word. And God word. Was with God. Wait a minute. Now, he is going to butcher John 1.1. 1, 1. And so we'll go back to it. Even though we just went through it, we're going to go back to it. And I want you to hear how he explains John 1.1. 1, 1. Now, that's another scripture that you folks use and say that mean that the second person of the Godhead was with God. He's a liar. That's a lie. That's a lie. When the Bible said the word is with God, you got to make that balance out. That's, out. that's right. Because he already said the words right. that I speak unto you, they are spirit. Spirit. And then now you need to hear this explanation of what does he mean by the third clause of John 1 1. Before we go to him, let's let, let's read it again for ourselves. In the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word was God. Now, let's listen to his interesting spin on it. Hey, what do you mean the word is with God? Read the next sentence, and I'll tell you what that is. And the word, and the word was God. He's with himself, by himself. He made everything for himself. That's right. The word is with God simply means he's a God of his word. That's right. When he says something, it got to come to pass. I dare you to tell me that there's a second person in the Godhead. He said that he's a he's a God of his word. So that's what that particular verse means. Let's go back to it again. And the word was God, meaning that he's a he's a he's a God of his word. That makes absolutely no sense. No, again, to understand this passage, in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. Kaihalagas and pras tan than and the word was with or to God. Kaiphas and Halagas and God, and it says, was the word. And it's reversed. The, the reason why the Theos is before Lagas is to give emphasis 
to what the word was. The word was, is God. Geno Jennings needs to, one, understand the text, understand the Greek, and really take back what he just said, that he's a God of his, he's a God of his word. That's what that, that means. That makes absolutely no sense. I've, I've never actually heard anyone give that take. And there's a reason why, because that take just doesn't stand. If I go back to eternity, go ahead. I can't find no flesh and blood. No flesh and blood. Son. That's right. But I can find the thought. That's right. The thought of the son right. was in the eternal mind of God. Was That's right. It was four days before the foundation. There you had a son in God's mind, in God's will. That's right. But he didn't have an actual being. That's right. Why? Fullness of time had to come. That's right. Time was connected to his arrival. That's right. And time was connected to his stay. That's right. And time was connected to his departure. That's right. So his belief is that Jesus existed only in time, that as the son of God, he was only the son of God at this moment in time. Remember, we believe, according to the scriptures, obviously we know that Jesus is the Lord. The Lord is God. Let's go back to it. In Deuteronomy 4, let's start in verse 35, it says, to you it was shown that you might know that the Lord, he is God. There is no other besides him. So what does it say? According to this passage, the Lord is God. He reiterates this. If we go down to verse 39, he says it again. He says, know therefore today and take it to your heart that the Lord, he is God in heaven above and on earth. He is the Lord. He is God where on heaven, in heaven and on earth below. There is no other, no other God, no other Lord. Well, the reason why that's important before we go to the New Testament in Exodus 3, we know about this encounter that Moses has with the Lord. In verse two, he says, the angel of the Lord appeared to him. So who appeared to him? The angel of the Lord. Where in the midst of the burning bush. So the angel of the Lord, keep this in mind what the terms that are being used, the names, the angel of the Lord. So that's the first title that's being given, the angel of the Lord. And then in verse three, it says, so Moses, I said, I must turn aside now to see this marvelous sight and see why, the, why it's not burned up. When the Lord, another title, the next name, the next title given, the Lord saw that he turned aside. So we got the angel of the Lord and the Lord from where? In the midst of the burning bush. God called to him from the midst of the bush. So we've got three titles given now. The Lord, the angel of the Lord, and God from where? Out of the midst of the burning bush. And we know it's God because he says, verse five, then he says, do not come here remove your sandals from your feet for the place which you are standing is holy ground. So we know clearly this is God. As a matter of fact, he indicates he's God. The very next passage, he says, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And so Moses was afraid to look. He hid his face. Why? Because he was literally in the presence of God. Now, so what does Moses see? He sees this burning bush and who's in the midst of the burning bush? The three titles that are given, the angel of the Lord, the Lord and God. We just read that the Lord is God. And so the Lord is God. God is the angel of the Lord. And vice versa. So it's just the same person who has been given these different titles. As a matter of fact, if we go further, when Moses says, who shall I say sent me? He's, God gives two ways of saying it. He says, Eche, 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 which is I am who I am. Now that's from the first person standpoint, I am. But if Moses is going to say it, he gives him the word Yahweh, which is Someone saying I am, someone else calling him I am, which is very important because remember, and this is why this is important, we're going to find that you have to know this in order to be saved. So according to this passage, according to what we've seen in, in this passage in Deuteronomy 4, who is the Lord? The Lord is God. Well, accordingly, you must confess in order to be saved. Chapter 9, chapter 10, verse 9 of Romans, you must confess with your mouth that Jesus as Lord. Does it mean that he is a Lord or the Lord? Well, is in fact the Lord. There's only one Lord, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one Lord. And as we go down a little further to verse 11, the scripture says that whoever believes in him will not be disappointed. In who? In Jesus. And you must confess him as Lord, whether you are Jew or Greek, doesn't matter, for the same Lord is Lord of all. Again, this Lord Jesus is Lord of all. For whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. And so who is Jesus? Jesus is the Lord. The Lord is God. Now, to make this point even more so, back in Leviticus, we've been told how there is this atonement for sin that's given. And now after the atonement, you've got the high priest that's going to mediate it. We're going to find out that Jesus is going to take the place of the high 
of a high priest in the Old Testament, we also see that there's a scapegoat whereby all the sins are cast upon the head of the scapegoat and sent away. Jesus plays a part of the scapegoat. Remember, John says, look, the Lamb of God who, set, who takes the sins away from the world. He's also going to play a part of the sacrificial offering that sheds his blood. Jesus plays all three of those, those roles perfectly to take away sin permanently. But notice something that that's stated in Leviticus chapter 17, 11. He says, for the life of the flesh is in the blood, and I have given to you on the altar to make atone for your souls. When you look at that, you might not notice it at first hand, but if we just go over to the right hand side and look at the Hebrew, when it says, I have given it to you on the altar, there's two words you need to look at. This word, wahani, and I, and then natatin. This word natatin in the Hebrew means I have given, because in Hebrew, you don't need the first person pronoun or any other pronoun to be added, you can have that embedded into the verb itself and also the tense and the mood and voice and so forth. And so in this case, the natatin, which is which is to be translated as I have given. The interesting thing though, right before that you have the ani. Ani means I. So you have I, I have given. Why would God say I, I have given the blood on the altar to make atonement? Well, because he's literally saying, I myself am giving. And how do we take that? We take that as he, not someone else, not sending someone else, but he himself is going to supply the blood from himself. The problem is God doesn't have flesh. But what is it? But what's going to happen? Well, remember we get to Hebrews 10, 5. He says, sacrifices and offerings you did not desire, but a body you prepared for me. Now, notice the implication here you prepared for me, indicating that Jesus had already been in existence. So you could not come back and say that his existence started at the time of his incarnation, that he became the son of God at that moment. He's always been who he always will be. The issue is we just happen to recognize him even more so. He was revealed even more so to us. According to 1 Timothy, Paul in 1 Timothy 3.16 says, by common confession, great is the mystery of godliness. He, that's Jesus, who was revealed in flesh, was vindicated by the Spirit. Now, this word revealed, some may say manifested. It's just him being revealed. God has revealed himself in the person of Jesus Christ. For some reason, that throws Gino off. I don't know why that because we say the second person of the Trinity or of the Godhead, that bothers him. Don't let that terminology uh, bother you. Don't let it throw you off. It's just showing a distinction. However, this distinction is, and I get it. It can be a bit confusing because there's nothing or no one that exists like God. There's a distinction, but they're also the same. How could that be? We can't explain it. But the Bible just lets us know that it is true. Jesus is God. Again, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. In the beginning was the word. That's Jesus. And all things were made through him. It's not a thought that originated in God's mind, that came out of his mouth, and bam, that's Jesus. That is not how that works. That limits and denigrates who Jesus actually is. He always been. Now, to make this even more vivid and to show why this is important, remember, the Bible says in John 17, and of course, you know, covered this, that Jesus is praying. And notice what he says. He says, now, Father, glorify me together with yourself, with the glory which I had before the world was which I had with you. Remember, we just read in Philippians that Jesus emptied himself of what? To some degree, it had to be of, of his glory because again, in his full glory, he could not be in our presence. Now, remember, we also have seen in the past, in the Old Testament, this angel of the Lord, the Lord appear and take on flesh. We saw him do so with Hagar. We saw him do so with Abraham. We saw him do so with, with Gideon. We saw him do so with Jacob. We saw him do so with Joshua. We see him do it over and over again in the Old Testament. And they identified this man that they see before them as God. And so here now we have Jesus in his incarnation, in his ministry, at the, at the very end praying, give me back the glory that I have with you. The very glory that apparently you must have emptied yourself of on your own. Remember, he did so voluntarily. So now the prayers give me back the glory. And notice what he's saying, the glory that I had with you in the very beginning. Why is that important? Well, because the Bible teaches that God will not share his glory. In Isaiah 42, 8, it says, I am the Lord, who is God, that is my name. I will not give my glory to another person, nor my praise to graven images. So what is he saying? There's no one else that can have my glory. Will I share? My name is the Lord. 
and I will give my glory to nobody else. Well, then that would be a little blasphemous if Jesus is not God, if Jesus is not the Lord, because Jesus is saying, give me back the glory that I had with you in the beginning. Remember, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God. Now, some might even want to say that, well, Cord, this might be a bit trivial. Is it that important? It is of the utmost importance. Remember, we read in Romans 10, 9, that you must confess that Jesus is the Lord. As a matter of fact, more to the point that the Lord is God, Jesus makes a statement in, in John 8, 24. Therefore, I say to you that you will die in your sins unless you believe that I am he. Now, the I am he kind of betrays a little bit what the truth, the force of this, this word is. He says you will die unless you believe that ego me, that I'm the I am, that I am he. This, this ego me is what was used when Moses is asked or asked God, who shall I say that sent me? And this word I am, this is what he just said. So unless you believe that, that I'm him, that I'm the I am, then you literally will die in your sins. So if you take this teaching of Geno's, and if you take this to believe that he is not the I am, and that his existence was only for a time, he had a beginning, an end, and that was it. That was the limit of his ministry as the son of God, and that he only existed as a thought, a predestinated thought that came to be. Well, then you misunderstand that he is the I am. And in doing so, you cannot, according to Jesus' word, and Paul's as well, and John's as well. You cannot be safe if you do not believe that he is the I am. Amen. <music>